China's Security Pact with Solomon Islands Have you heard of the Solomon Islands? Are you saying, it sounds familiar, but I'm not sure of the geographical locations of the islands? Okay, what about Vanuatu, Kiribati, Tuvalu, Tonga, Fiji, Cook Islands, Marshall Islands, and a few more? I can hear you say, okay, what about these islands? Why should I care where these islands are? If you are Australia, or New Zealand, or even the United States, you'll definitely care, especially if a hostile country like China, tries to establish a military base, in one of these islands. These islands and many others are on the South Pacific Ocean, and they are close to Australia, and New Zealand. Australia has been so far away from all the conflict zone, that they have enjoyed a peaceful existence for a long time, since World War II. But, China has plans to change the status quo, and spoil that peace for Australia and New Zealand. Solomon Islands is one of those countries, like Kiribati, Tuvalu, Tonga, or Fiji. Most of these countries are formed by many islands coming together as one nation. However, these are still very small nations and they are not economically or militarily powerful. Solomon Islands gained its independence from Britain in 1978, and since then, it has seen domestic conflicts, between the Malaitans, who were settlers from another island, and the natives of the main islands. In 1998, the conflict turned quite violent, and subsequently, the Townsville Peace Agreement, was signed in the year 2000. The two group of islanders still couldn't maintain peace, within Solomon Islands, and hence a peacekeeping force led by Australia, was present between 2003 to 2017. In 2019, Manasseh Sogaveri became the Prime Minister of Solomon Islands, after having served in the same position previously as well. A few months after coming to power, Sogaveri made a big foreign policy change. He announced that his country will recognize the People's Republic of China, and abandoned its long-standing position, of recognizing Taiwan, as the official China. It was widely rumored, and alleged by the opposition, China had influenced Sogaveri through bribes, and through their pet project, namely, Belt and Road Initiative. The principal opposition to Sogaveri, the Malaitans were supportive of the democratic Taiwan, and went on protests, some of them turning violent, resulting in a deadly spree of looting and arson, centered on the capital Honiara's Chinatown. Sobaveri sent an urgent request for the peacekeeping force, comprising of Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, and Papua New Guinea, to help him maintain peace. They arrived immediately to help the Solomon Islands. The Maliatan leaders, were upset with the peacekeepers, that they were propping up Sogaveri's unpopular, and corrupt government, and only helping China, in the process. Solomon Islands came under the lens of China, as soon as Sogaveri came to power, and they ensured Solomon Islands will shift official recognition from Taiwan, to the PRC. This was the beginning of China's influence on Solomon Islands, ensuring the nation enter into the geopolitical struggle, between China, and the United States. In late March 2022, news broke that China and Solomon Islands were planning to sign a new security agreement, and this sent alarm bells to many countries, but mainly to Australia, and New Zealand. As per the leaked draft documents, Chinese were to set up military, and intelligence presence in Solomon Islands. The reaction of Australia was one of sharp concern, since the relationship between Australia and China has deteriorated sharply since 2020. In 2020, Australia demanded a fair and independent probe into the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic, that started in Wuhan, China. China did not want any probe, and wasn't interested in cooperating with international agencies either, and hence, this demand evoked sharp reaction from China. China imposed billions of dollars in tariffs, on Australian goods. Several ships with Australian goods were stranded, near Shanghai, unable to get docking permit, and unload the consignment. Many Chinese leaders under Xi Jinping's direction, went on to full verbal attack on Australia, and the Chinese state media called Australia, 
as the gum stuck on China's shoe. Subsequently, Australia felt an existential threat from China, and had roped in international military and security alliances, which further deteriorated Australia-China relationship. The possibility of a war between China and Australia was not theoretical anymore. China still had one issue though, if it had to militarily attack Australia. It's the distance, that separated the two countries. China, and Australia were about 6,500 kilometers apart, and hence any attack on Australia needs to be carefully planned, and no surprise element was possible. This is where Solomon Islands came into play. Solomon Islands is much closer to Australia, less than 2,000 kilometers away. China wanted to have a military base in one, or many of these South Pacific Island nations, so that they can enter into a successful military campaign, against Australia. Many of the bribes given by China, to the political leaders came to light, through investigations, and this included the Solomon Islands as well. Since the political climate favored China, with the current leadership of Solomon Islands, China swooped down like a hawk on its prey, and made Solomon Islands sign a security agreement with China. The question is, how dangerous the China deal with Solomon Islands is, to Australia, New Zealand and the region. The simple answer is, it's very dangerous, and has the potential to spoil peace in the entire region. Solomon Islands is close to Guam, which is a Union territory of the United States, and has massive US military bases. Australia, New Zealand and the US have publicly opined, that the security agreement of Solomon Islands can cause great harm, to regional stability, but the Prime Minister of Solomon Islands, Sogaveri has shown no interest in backing down, and has formalized the agreement. David Penuelo, the president of nearby Micronesia, made a sincere plea to Manasseh Sogaveri, not to be caught in the swirls of the emerging US-China Cold War. He reminded the Solomon Islands, how both Micronesia and Solomon Islands were battlegrounds during World War II, and how their islands were destroyed, being part of that war. But Sogaveri was in no mood to listen. He has been accused of receiving bribes from China, though it's not been proven. Going by China's methods of bribing politicians, all around the world, it'll not be a surprise, the same is true in Solomon Islands as well. Sogaveri on his part, has downplayed the significance of the Chinese security agreement, and said, it's been overblown. However, the details of the agreement show a different picture. The security agreement makes China getting heavily involved in maintaining civic order, through the deployment of police, armed police, military personnel, and other law enforcement and armed forces. Also, it would allow large-scale and varied Chinese military and intelligence operations. This agreement is consistent with China's other interventions in smaller nations. China under Xi Jinping has been following an expansionist policy since 2012. Xi Jinping's foreign policy has included border conflicts with many of its neighbors, claim of new territories of the neighbors as their own, change maritime borders arbitrarily, ignore international rules, create artificial islands on disputed waters, and expand their military presence in poor, or corrupt nations, around the world. For China, any amount of money spent in having Solomon Islands, or other South Pacific nations, is worth the cost, given their expansionist agenda of gaining global influence. Their naval presence in Solomon Islands will help them, to interfere with US naval operations in the region, that could be crucial in the event of a conflict over Taiwan, or in the South and East China Seas. Also, in case of any conflict or war with Australia, they'll have a huge advantage. The irony of this whole tussle between China and the West is, China's military strength is derived from its economic growth, and the entire economy was created, grown and still sustained by its exports, to the same Western countries, it's now trying to wage a war with. Let's hope China's aggressive tactics don't lead to destruction, around the world. Thanks for watching.